to our next video in the Physiology 101 series. Today's topic is RQ ratio. RQ ratio stands for respiratory quotient, or it can also be called the respiratory exchange rate. And what that is is a breathing measurement um, that kind of shows the intensity that you're working at, okay? And it's measured um, by measuring the volume of CO2 divided by the uh, volume of O2, okay? So obviously as you exercise with a greater and greater intensity, you produce CO2 in your body and that comes out and you exhale it, okay? Obviously throughout your just normal day or, or low intensity activities, you're gonna be consuming O2 or oxygen. And so this measures kind of the exchange rate of those two uh, molecules, okay? So RQ is measured from 0.7 to 1.0. 0.7 is kind of on the lower intensity end of things, okay? And at that lower intensity, you're gonna be primarily fat fueled, okay? So activities where this kind of applies are things like uh, slow jogging, bike riding, swimming, anything that you can maintain for a really long time. Your RQ ratio ideally should be relatively low so that you can um, support that activity for a long time with your fat stores, okay? For other types of uh, sports and activities that are at a higher intensity, that RQ ratio is gonna be higher, closer to 1.0. Technically, it can go a little bit higher than 1.0, but for today, we'll just cut it at 1.0 and keep it pretty simple. Um, so what that tells us when the ratio gets up to 1.0 or a little bit higher, is that our CO2 is, is becoming greater, okay? So we're working at a higher intensity, we're exhaling a lot more CO2, and obviously we're working, um, we're working hard to kind of maintain that high heart rate. I like to think of these almost as like a heart rate measure, even though it's not specifically that, um, but it kind of cues you into how hard you're working and what is your primary uh, fuel for that activity. Um, so when it, as it relates to athletes, obviously you have athletes of all different types doing all different types of activities. Um, more of your like distance runner, marathon, marathoner and uh, triathletes are gonna do activities that last a really, really long time and they're gonna be primarily fat fueled, okay? So for these types of athletes, it's important that they maintain an RQ ratio in these lower zones so that they can use fat, which has the most calories per gram of all the macronutrients, so that they can sustain that level of activity for a long time, okay? On the other side of things, for carb-fueled sports, you want to think about things like uh, football or soccer or maybe like CrossFit. Um, and a lot of these types of sports rely on glycogen stores, which is a form of carb. And it's important that those types of athletes are fueling in a way that supports their exercise, okay? I.e., they need to be eating enough carbs, okay? So there's a lot of different um, things you can kind of extrapolate from this, and RQ ratio isn't one of those things that you're gonna measure over time and kind of, you know, see if it improves at all, but it's a really good measure to let you know what intensity you're working at and what fuel you're primarily using. Now, the truth of it is that even when you're um, doing an aerobic activity that's primarily fat fueled, you're still burning a little bit of glycogen and carbs. And in the same way, when you're doing a higher intensity uh, activity that burns primarily carbs, you still are burning a little bit of fat, but it's all about what's the primary kind of the rate limiter as far as your energy source, okay? So uh, we'll probably talk about this a little bit more in future videos, um, but we'll keep it there for now. Um, if you like this video or any of our other videos, check out our channel, like and subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.